Hello and welcome to the Lipid Maps podcast. I'm Matthew Conroy, I'm the curator of Lipid Maps and I'm joined today by Bill Christie and we're going to discuss the, uh, the tricky topic of how do we define a lipid. Bill, if you asked uh, three lipid scientists to define a lipid, I think you'd get four different answers. So what are your thoughts on what is a lipid? Well, ev everybody who works with lipid knows what a lipid is, but they don't define it. And I've struggled with this definition for most of my career. Uh, I, I wrote my book, Lipid Analysis, first edition back in 1973. So I knew what I was writing about, I thought then, in terms of lipids. I was dealing with uh, fatty acids and the derivatives, triglycerides, phospholipids, sphingolipids, that sort of thing. I wasn't dealing with carotenoids and sterols and, and, and isoprenoids of various kinds, fat-soluble vitamins. And about that time, in the, the late 60s, UPAC and IUB, which are the two main international bodies that study nomenclature, they came out with all sorts of really excellent recommendations about the nomenclature of lipids, including the nomenclature of fatty acids, the, the N-3 nomenclature that came out at that time, the SN nomenclature for, for glycerol lipids came out at that time. But what didn't come out was a definition of lipids. And that has been shirked by international bodies um, in general until lipid maps came along. Although Strictly speaking, Lipid Maps is a, a private organization. It's not an international body. In my writings, I've tended to remain fairly conservative in my definition of what a lipid is. Again, I go back perhaps to the history of this rather. Um, yes, because lipids have been classified and thought about for over a century now, nearly two centuries, I guess. Yes. Uh, at one time I had a copy of Bloor's book, which was published in 1940, and I, I lent it to somebody. I've never seen it again. I don't know what happened to it. But that dealt primarily with what the traditionalists would call a lipid, the, the, the fatty acids, glycerolipids, and so on. And it was only in the 1950s, I think, rather arbitrarily, people began to lump in things like isoprenoids and uh, carotenoids, steroidal hormones and the other aliphatic or, or lipid soluble materials into the same category. Now, I have a pretty good idea of what a lipid is not. Yes, I think it's, it, that's, an, that's an easier definition, definitely. <laughs> yeah. uh, and uh, I, I know one definition which I absolutely abhor and that's the definition based on lipid solubility uh, in organic solvents because uh, it's, it's relatively meaningless. Uh, there are lipids which are just as water soluble as organics as in organic solvents. Uh, uh, and, and equally things that are very definitely non-lipids which are organic soluble. Yes ex exactly. Uh, so but that persists in the literature, unfortunately, and it has no structural sense. Lipids, if you're going to have a definition, it must in some sense reflect the structures and the physical properties and perhaps functions. And those of us who work with mainstream lipids know exactly what we mean by lipid. If, if you, I have two books on my desk fairly regularly. One is the book by Gurr and John Harwood and others, which is now into its about its sixth edition on lipid biochemistry, doesn't mention isoprenoids at all, it doesn't mention carotenoids, it doesn't mention hoponoids, it doesn't mention all sorts of things which were are encompassed within that. And the other book is the biochemistry of lipids, lipid proteins and membranes, which is also in its sixth edition and now edited by Ridgway and McLeod, but it was the Vance and Vance in earlier editions. And that avoids these groups as well. What we have is a definition of mainstream lipids or a broader categorization that includes almost anything that is relatively speaking hydrophobic or has 
hydrophobic entities as a large part of it. Yeah, and I, and I guess that's an interesting question we might come on to, that you can add covalently bind lipids to proteins. At what point does this become a modified lipid versus modified protein? Exactly. Uh, we have lipids in the lipid maps database, which have a head group of a dipeptide, so two amino acids, and I think we'd clearly call that a modified lipid. If you add a palmitate, for instance, to the rhesus blood group proteins of 400 or so amino acids, I don't think anyone would call that that's now a lipid. This is still a modified protein. Yes. But, but somewhere in the middle is a grey area where it's neither and both. Exactly. The lipid maps definition I've been uncomfortable with, partly because it was rather technically expressed. And this puts off, I would have thought, people who are not biochemists. If I have it to hand, I can read it out. Lipids are hydrophobic or amphiphatic small molecules that may originate entirely or in part by carbon ion based condensations of thioesters fatty acids, polyketides, etc., or by carbocation-based condensations of isoprene units, phenols, stenols, etc. So I understand what that means. I have sufficient chemical and biochemical training. But if I was a food scientist or a nutritionist or you know, someone not familiar with mainstream biochemistry or chemistry, you would have a difficulty understanding that. Yes. Um, and, and I would add, you know, I think, it, as you say, it's a useful biochemical definition. However, if someone has just isolated a, a new compound for the first time, that you may have no idea of its biosynthetic pathway. Exactly. Yeah, you, you could have a, a good educated guess based on other things it's similar to, but you could be wrong. Yes. You know, per perhaps the problem is trying to encompass it all in in one sentence maybe there's no way of doing that we have to no have, have a, 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 a paragraph or or or, or at least the, the other problem with that i had with that definition is that it in essence it, it means there are four main groups of organic compounds uh, proteins carbohydrates perhaps nucleic acids and then lipids and everything that's organic has to be encompassed in that. So the lipids take in, is a catch-all that in, includes e everything that no one can think of how to classify it separately. Yeah. So, um, so maybe we should define lipids as everything else and then a long list of exceptions, which is a spectacularly unhelpful definition, I realise. <laughs> yes. On the other hand, you, you, you sometimes have to go with the flow. If that's the way science is going and, and that's the way it's accepted then we have to say okay there are lipids that include carbohydrates and so on and polyketides and all the other things but then what do we call what i might call mainstream lipids now again i have my own definition which i used in one of my books to begin with. The lipids are fatty acids and their derivatives and substances related biosynthetically or functionally to these compounds. And the advantage of that... So you've gone, you've gone down the define the biosynthetic route too in that uh, case. Well, it it's also includes functionally. That's the important thing. In, in other words, cholesterol is a lipid because they're in membranes and has the same function as fatty acids. And you could say that tocopherol was a lipid because again, it's in membranes or fat soluble vitamins were, were, are there in membranes with functional roles that are uh, akin to, the, to what we would call the mainstream lipids. There again, with a functional definition, there is sometimes an issue of it may not be known. Yes. New compound, you may not know where in the cell it's found or what it does. Yes. On the other uh, hand, I guess maybe you can't classify it until you do. Yes, to a point. Uh, on, the other, on the other hand, if it's got a fatty acid attached to it, it comes in with that definition. If, it, if it's got a long chain, uh, straight chain 
uh, alkyl moiety attached to it. It's a lipid by that definition. So um, it may not be perfect, but it's, I would say that this is what I would call mainstream lipids. Um, yes, they're, they're the, in a sense, the easy to define lipids. And yeah. then we go to a, an outer level of much more nebulous, is it a lipid, is it not a lipid category? Yes, um, that's certainly the, the, the case. I don't know what we should do about it. That's the other problem. I tend to think, I mean, I have said that, that you know, perhaps we should read, look at the literature and there's things like lipoids and lipids were, were old terms that were, were used. I think just generally we should talk about acyl lipids as a group carotenoids as a group, sterols as a group, that all come under the same umbrella of lipid. And I think we're stuck yeah. with that now. I, I, I have the impression, much as uh, when I'm having a political argument with, with somebody, we put the world to rights uh, uh, and go away happy that we've solved the world's problems, but we'll go further forward, really. Um, and it's a little I think we, we've identified how difficult it is to define a lipid without getting any closer to uh, making that difficulty less difficult. No, yes. Uh, but we know what a lipid is. Yes. <laughs> even if we can't explain it to anyone else. <laughs> uh, and even if what you know as a lipid and what I know as a lipid is not the same thing. Yes. We all know what a lipid is. Yes, exactly. So I think that's a, a very good place to uh, conclude our interview. So Bill Christie, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for listening and join us next time when we'll be chatting to Bill and looking at lipid resources on the web via the Lipid Maps portal.